Hello friends, followers and channel members and welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Today I'm very excited to be bringing you information on a new feature which has been added to the fly-by-wires Airbus A320NX and this is the bearing distance to feature. Now, how many times have I been asked during live streams how do you find out how far you are away from a certain airport or waypoint and, uh, and is it possible? Well, of course, yes it is in the real aircraft but up until now it's not been really very easy to do in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the bearing and distance to feature allows us to enter uh, a waypoint or an airport, anything like that, and get our bearing and distance to it nice and uh, nice and easily. So we can enter absolutely anything. It can be a VOR, it can be an airport, it can be an NDB uh, or a specific waypoint fix. It can even be a, a runway threshold, which is very, uh, very useful. If you think of places like Amsterdam, uh, where some of the runways there are nearly a mile or two away from the uh, the main terminal so it's not just entering the, uh, the the airport's location but you can actually be really specific and enter the uh, runway threshold so when uh, when would we use these so in uh, in the real world what you'd look to do is that you can enter them on departure you can enter your departure runway threshold that just gives you good spatial awareness and uh, in low visibility procedures as well you can check you're on the right runway things like that because of course the distance should read close to zero when you're lined up on the uh, on the threshold and we use them as well in non-precision approaches like VOR approaches or uh, RNP approaches and they just become really useful as you can obviously then check your distance etc and uh, and better Bearing. That's uh, that's what the feature does. Other examples of when we use this in Microsoft Flight Simulator would be we can now use this to help us with our top of descent planning until VNAV comes in, and we also know that there are missing waypoints in the SIDs and stars in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so we can sort of manipulate that feature a little bit. We'll have a look at how to do that, and we can also, if we want to uh, want to be really lazy, we can look at intercepting the ILS at the correct height and distance. So. Let's jump inside the flight deck and see how we're going to do uh, how we're going to do all of that. So here we are on the ground at Manchester at the moment, and all we're going to do is come down to our McDo, and it is on this page here, the progress page, which many of you will have seen me use in the live streams, but now I'll be using it a lot more. So. Uh, just turn the brightness up a little bit. I think I may already be at maximum brightness, but there we are. So this is it, the uh, bearing and distance to page. So let's have a look at how this can help with planning our top of descent. So if I bring up the charts for one of the arrivals into Manchester, let's just have a look, bring Navigraph in over here. So loading up now is the, uh, the chart for the Dane 2 Alpha arrival when... Uh, when Navigraph decides to, uh, to play ball. And basically, in this uh, on this chart, it tells us, or it should tell us if this decides to work, that we need to be at flight level 200 by a particular waypoint. That waypoint is called Elvis. And if uh, the Navigraph charts aren't going to work for me, then uh, we'll just have to, uh, <laughs> we'll just have to, to, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, let me just have a quick look. Why is, uh, why is that not working? Having a, a, a bit of an issue there. Uh, oh, there we go. Now it's working. Now, okay, so. The uh, the Dane 2 Alpha arrival, we can see for descent planning just here, so the Dane 2 Alpha, uh, flight level 200, 25 miles before the Trent VOR. Well, that's a VOR, of course, we've always been able to use the RadNav page for VORs, that's fine, we can get our distance easily from there. Um, but Elvos is a waypoint, so if we're coming in via Elvos, then we want to be a flight level 200 by Elvos. Well, now we can put that in. So, very straightforward. Let's type it in. E L V O S. And there we go. So, currently Elvos is uh, on a heading of 141 degrees away from us and at a distance of 52 
uh, miles. Um, so what we do in our top of descent planning, let's say now if we went over to our uh, electronic flight bag over here, we've got on our performance page the top of descent calculator. So if we said we were at a uh, at an altitude of call it 30,000 feet, let's just type that in, whoops, try again. So let's say we're at an altitude of 30,000 feet and that chart told us we wanted to be at 20,000 feet and let's say we wanted to have a nice gentle descent, uh, let's call it 1,500 feet per minute. Then it would be able to tell us and show a display when we would need to start our descent in order to get there. And of course, you can then work out, looking at your McDo, how far you are away. The only reason this isn't working here is because I'm not actually currently flying and uh, we've got zero knots shown there because we're not moving. But you understand how that works. So if you wanted to descend 1500 feet per minute down to flight level 200 and it said you need to uh, start your descent 20, 30 miles away. Well, now you can put Elvis in there. You'd know when you're 20, 30 miles away and you could start that descent. So there's a little way we can use um, use this new feature to work our, uh, our top of descent out uh, using the performance calculator as well if you wish. Okay, so what about missing waypoints uh, in a star? Now we've seen this happen uh, quite a bit, I've certainly had it, and one of the uh, ones which gets me every time is if I'm flying up to Edinburgh. So if I just pull up the charts for Edinburgh here, and, and this inpip one echo arrival. Now, this particular waypoint, for some reason, exists in the Microsoft database, Tartan, I love that, nice Scottish waypoint. Um, so it exists in the database, but for some reason, it's not part of the star, which, as it's the main holding uh, point intersection, then if you're on VATSIM, you really need to know when you are at, uh, when you are at Tartan. So, if we were on our uh, if we were on our way up to Edinburgh, we could obviously type in uh, Tartan T A R T N, pop that in there, and there we go. So there's the bearing, there's the distance away. Now, one of the other things you can do is you can also create what's called pseudo waypoints, which means you can create, if you like, phantom waypoints. And let me show you what that means. So. Tartan is a distance of around 25 miles away on a bearing of 007 from Eskdo, as you can see there. Well, we can actually create a waypoint here in the McDo at 25 miles away, a bearing of 007 degrees, which would be Tartan. So let's say that this particular waypoint here was actually missing from the database. It wouldn't matter. We've got all the information we need here to actually create that waypoint. So let me just um, get rid of that. So what was it? It is um, zero zero at a bearing of 007, 25 miles away from Eskdo. So let's type that in. So let's type in Eskdo. There it is. The next thing I'm going to type in then is the bearing, which was 007. This has to be three digits, so I can't just type a seven in there. So we're going to pop a slash in there. 007. And then a distance of 25. I don't think you can type in 25.2. In fact, I'll just try that. So let's put a slash in there. 25.2. Uh, so if this does work, these figures shouldn't actually change because Tartan and this particular distance is, uh, is exactly the same. So let me just try that. It may not accept the decimal place. But it has, and there has just been a very slight change there. Realistically, there, there shouldn't have been. Um, but we're talking 0 0.3, 0 0.4 miles, which uh, which is nothing. But could you see there how we created this phantom waypoint? So that is actually where that tartan uh, waypoint is. So that uh, that that is really really nice. Now. Here's a way that we can use creating these pseudo waypoints, these phantom waypoints, to help us intercept the ILS perfectly. Now, I obviously don't recommend you do this on VATSIM, and it would never be done like this um, I I in real life, of course. But if I now just bring in the chart for arriving here at Manchester, 
So, this is the chart for arriving at, uh, at Manchester Airport. And as you can see, there is our ILS approach. A heading of 323 is the final course for runway 23 right. Well, the golden rule or general rule of thumb for most ILS approaches, um, which are uh, a normal three degree glide slope path angle, is at nine miles away you want to be at 3,000 feet, 12 miles away you want to be 4,000 feet, 50 miles away you want to be at 5,000 feet. So we could technically create one of these phantom waypoints 50 miles out from the threshold of runway 23 right and we'll say we're going to intercept that at 5,000 feet. So if we're going to do that we know we want to be 50 miles out and we're going to be slap bang perfect on that glide slope at uh, 50 miles out at 5,000 feet. So how do we do that? Well let's have a quick look then. So if we go back, so I'm now going to type in the airport which is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, that's the uh, ICAO code for Manchester. You could just put Manchester in and it would also give you that. As you can see, I'm sat at Manchester Airport at the moment and uh, it's given me a bearing but a distance of 0 0.3, which uh, which is absolutely fine. So, but I want that runway threshold, of course. I don't just want the general overview of where the airport is, I want the runway threshold. So this would be Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, runway 23. And of course, it's really two, three right, so we just need to add an R at the end of that. Obviously, two, three left, it would be an L. So now we've got the the uh, the place, which is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie two, three right, and then we're going to put the bearing. Now a little bit of uh, maths here. So we want to be fifteen miles away on a course of the opposite of this, which is 232 degrees minus 180, because we're flying in the opposite direction, of course. So minus 180, which gives us a course of 52 degrees. Remember, it has to be entered as three digits, so that's 0, 5, 2. Forward slash again, and I, what did I say? I said, let's go, uh, let's start our approach 15 miles out. There we go and enter and there you are that's spot on isn't it so to get to that phantom waypoint that we've just created which would be somewhere uh, oops somewhere over over here somewhere uh, if we uh, if we have the chart big enough then that is now telling us that we are 15.6 miles away from the thrush uh, we would be by the time we got there to fly to that waypoint we've created, we need to fly 15.6 miles on a heading of 053 degrees. And if we were at 5,000 feet by the time we got there, we'd be on that perfect ILS uh, glide slope to be able to uh, come down and uh, capture the ILS, etc. And hopefully make a nice steady landing here into Manchester. So hopefully that has covered everything that we can do with the bearing and distance 2 feature brought in on the uh, the latest version of the A A320NX. Please note that this is only available on the developer version and the experimental version. It is not yet merged into the new stable building which was released just a couple of days ago after, after filming this. So only on the dev and the experimental version at the time of filming but really, really useful and something that I'll certainly be using in all my live streams from uh, from now on. So if you've got any questions about how to enter things into that, please do leave a comment down below. I'll come back and, uh, and help you out there. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video and please do consider hitting that subscribe button if you found that useful and turn on the notifications bell. And a big thank you to you all for watching. Thank you very much. Speak to you uh, again soon. Bye-bye for now.